So let's say I want to add a custom property to my gun here. Usually what I have to do is I have to go to the explorer, go to my gun, create a int value, let's say, and this will be the reload time. And this would be a value, I could change it to like 10 or something, or like 1, whatever, that's it. And in a script, it'd be really clunky, I have to access it by saying gun.reloadTime.value. It just doesn't feel good, and if I want to create a value on the fly, I have to do instance.new, it'd be a mess. But Roblox recently added a new feature called attributes. And attributes allow you to add custom properties to your instances in Roblox with the click of a button. So if you're interested in learning how to use these, the best way to use them, and at the end I'll show you how to implement table values with attributes even though they aren't natively supported, make sure to watch this video. And if you enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So attributes in Roblox got released very recently. So for that reason, they're currently in beta. So you can't access them out of the box. If you want to access attributes, go to File, Beta Features, and then find it somewhere. I'm scrolling down a little bit, so at the top you'll have to go down a fair bit. Here we go. Enable Attributes Beta. I already have it enabled. Make sure it checks there. And click Save. So now we have access to attributes. So let's use them. I'm going to create a quick little part here. And you'll see in the properties window, there is a new dropdown called attributes. And there's this big, beautiful button called add attribute. So I can click on this button and you can see we have a few options. First is the name. So I'm gonna make a quick attribute and this will be a rarity attribute. So rarity would usually be a number, so I can go to the type dropdown and choose a number. So you'll notice only a few types are supported. A few notable exceptions are C frames and tables, but there is a workaround for tables. I'll get to that a little bit later. But some of the key ones are strings, booleans, numbers. So a lot of the same ones that we can access using values, such as like int values or number values or string values, whatever, we can also access in attributes. So I can save that, and you can see my rarity attribute appears in the properties panel, and that is really useful. You'll notice that my part does not have anything new in its hierarchy. It's still just a part, but now we have this rarity number. So I can set this to like 10, maybe, or maybe like 0.1. You can set it to whatever you want since it's a number. Let's just make another, we can make a string and we can call this my message. And let's just set this to hello world. There we go. So that's a few little attributes. So this is cool on its own, but it's really useless without scripting because that's how you're going to make these attributes come to life. So I'm going to go into server script service and create a script. Here we go. So in this script, I'm going to first define a part, which will be equal to workspace.part. There we go. So there are a few specific functions that you can use to access attributes. Keep in mind, you cannot use part.myMessage. This will not work. This is bad code because the attribute is not a property. It's just a special attribute. So the way you access part attributes is via a special function. So I can say local my message equals part colon get attribute. And then we send in the string of the attribute name. So I go back to my part. You can see the attribute name is my message. And with your attribute names, they can't contain spaces. They can only be 100 characters. I think there may be a few other limitations. But just keep the name simple. Keep them nice and legible and just make them easy to remember as well. So you can access them from different scripts. So we can get attribute my message and we can just say print my message. So if I were to run this, you can see it prints hello world, which indeed is my message. You can also create a little for loop for I attribute in pairs part 
get attributes. We can get all of our attributes and we can print the attribute. So it prints the values of the attributes and the keys in the for loop. That would be the name. So you could do that as well in case you wanted to access all of the attributes of your part. And if you want to access an attribute or set an attribute, you just simply call part set attribute. This is very, very simple, very intuitive stuff. So let's say I want to set my message to a value of goodbye world instead of hello world. And we can print part get attribute my message. And let's just copy this so you can see the difference. So it says hello world, then goodbye world. One thing you want to keep in mind though is if I were to say put a typo here and my message, it would create a new property or new attribute I should say. So you can see it doesn't change and that's because if I were to go to my part, it created a new typo attribute with my new value. So if you have an error in your code where it's like the attribute isn't changing, you have to check for these little typos. And the way I like to prevent these typos is by saying defining a constant at the very top of your script, like my message attribute name. Here we go. It might be a little too long. I'll leave it for now. So, and I can set this to my message. So I can copy this variable instead of using string literals, I can just use this. And this will prevent me from getting a really nasty bug that doesn't error. So run this again, you can see that it works perfectly fine. In the same way as you can set an attribute to a specific value, if you were to say part set attribute to my message attribute name. If you were to set it to nil, it would delete the attribute. So if I play this and I go to my part, you can see the my message attribute is no longer there. So you have a lot of control of when you can use your attributes. One really cool thing, and this is this is what makes it equatable to a value like an int value, is you can detect when an attribute changes. So I'm going to go to my part, create a new attribute, and it's going to be a number. And we're going to call this num touches. And then in this script, I'm just going to comment this out by using control slash. In the script, I can say part.touched connect function. So whenever the part's touched, I want to say part set attribute num touches to part get attribute num touches plus one. So this should set num touches to plus one every single time the part gets touched. And then I can go and make a new script, for example. And in this script, we can name this script touch detector. In this script, we can say local part equals workspace dot part and then we can say part get attribute change signal and this would be an attribute let's just say num touches because that's what we named our attribute and we can say connect function I'm honestly not sure if it passes in the value but just to be safe I'll say local num touches equals part get attribute num touches and then we can print num touches there we go so what this should do is it should basically whenever the attribute changes and you'll notice in our script here we change it every time the part gets touched we will detect that and we will print out the number so this script is not detecting when the part's touched it's detecting when the attribute of the part is touched so let's play this it says it prints one and as I step on it with my player character, this value continually goes up. So this allows you to get a lot of functionality out of your attributes 
without having extra clutter in your workspace or whatever. And one of the most powerful uses of attributes is probably, in my opinion, script attributes. So I can go to my script and I can add a variable, let's say debug. And this is going to be a boolean, and this will be whether debug is on or off. So it's just like a normal boolean, and I can also add a number. This will be game time, and then another number, which will be debug game time. There you go. So for our, our normal game time, we want it to be a good five seconds, let's say, but debug, we want fast iteration, right? So we're going to set our debug game time to one second. And just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go back to my main script. Here we go. And I'm going to make a little loop at the very bottom, and we're going to say while true do. I'm going to say if script. Actually, instead of saying script get attribute, we're going to define our attribute values at the very top as constants because they should not change. I mean, they could change, but I feel like I would use this more as just some static variables that you edit like in the properties window before runtime, not during runtime. So I can say local debug attribute equals script get attribute debug is a local debug game time equals script get attribute debug game time and then we can say local game time equals script get attribute game time here we go so then we can say well true do if debug attribute then wait debug at debug game time and we can say else wait game time we can print iterated because if we're iterating we're in a loop so if we run this right now you can see if you wait a little bit it says iterated once and it's, pr it's pretty slow but if we enable debug don't even have to go into the script don't even have to look at the script editor it iterates much quickly so this is very powerful for for example a team project where you have level designers you have character creators you have modelers builders whatever they can access certain script properties without actually going in a script. Because for some people, especially in Roblox, the script editor is a scary place with a bunch of numbers and colors, and people just don't like that. So you can expose these variables to the public, and it's just like the properties window, but with your own custom properties. So one of the drawbacks of attributes right now is the fact that you cannot save table values. But there is a workaround, and that involves using JSON encoding and decoding. So I'm going to go to my part again. We're going to create a new attribute and name this loot table. And make sure it's a string. And I'm going to just create a new script. And we will name this script loot script or something like that. And then we can define our part, which is workspace dot part and now we can create our table so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say local loot table equals a table and make sure in this json this is going to be converted to json so you want this table to only have numbers strings booleans and other tables it cannot have functions can't have anything else because json in the end is a string so you can't really convert it to anything else so we have our loot table and i can define like gems and this will have a weight of 0 0.1 and a name of shiny gem and then i can define gold for example this will have a weight of 0 0.5 and a name of gold ingot so we have two little items in our loot table and now all we have to do is set this in our in our little property our attribute so what i want to do is i want to define local http service equals game get service 
HTTP service, HTTP service, I should say. And it doesn't matter if you have HTTP, HTTP requests enabled. This function is just like a local like string function. You don't really need it. So now I'm going to just say part set attribute. We want to set the attribute of our loot table just to double check. Let's make sure it is indeed named loot table. And we can set this value to HTTP service, JSON encode. We want to encode a JSON value and we're gonna send it our loot table. So you could obviously do this at runtime, but a better way to do this, in my opinion, would just be to copy this code straight into the command bar and it'll set it inside the window before runtime. So I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna hit enter. And you can see that it converted it to JSON, which is a string and allows you to decode it as well. So in order to access it from a script, so let's just go to our main script again. This script is getting very saturated, but that's okay. And we can access our loot table by saying game get service HTTP HTTP service JSON code part get attribute loot table there we go so here we have a loot table and we can print loot table dot gems dot name or something like that so we were to run this you can see it prints shiny gem you could also iterate through the table you could access it, whatever. This just allows you to store a lot of data because you don't want to have like hundreds of attributes that just wouldn't be good. So I would recommend using this. Someone at some point, I might even do this, might make a plugin to make this process easier if they don't add native table support. So yeah. So that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. This is a super, super cool feature. I'm so glad Roblox added it. But other than that, I hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye.